good evening students uh, i am dr harpreet uh, so today we will be discussing uh, about a technique uh, which has been recently advocated for uh, irreparable rotator cuff tears and uh, today i'll just show you the tips and tricks and technique technical part we won't be going in much into the theory part but i'll be showing few videos on how uh, to do this surgery how to go about this surgery so i'll just share my screen so lower trapezius transfer that is what we are talking about uh, and we will try and discuss in brief the tips and technique so uh, you are sitting in your opd and a patient presents to your clinic or opd uh, patient is a 55 year old lady uh, she is right hand dominant she has no history of major trauma and uh, she presents to you with inability to lift her arm overhead that is pseudo paresis and pain in the right shoulder and right upper limb since about Six to nine months. So there is no history of trauma, but this is what what his history and presenting complaints are. So this is the picture. Which these are the pictures which depict the range of motion of the lady. Uh, so the right arm is affected. So uh, the there is hardly any elevation. External rotation is also almost absent, and internal rotation is also limited. Uh, if you look look at this video, we are trying to take the arm in external rotation and the arm falls back in internal rotation. So this is uh, looks almost like a positive external rotation lag sign. It goes back in internal rotation. So it's a positive external rotation lag sign. So for so this is the MRI of this patient. So uh, first looking at the coronal section. If you look at the coronal section, this is a fat. suppressed image the cuff is lying here so if you look at the cuff cuff is here it's not going beyond the glenoid so it's a massively retracted rotator cuff tear uh if you look at the uh, sagittal section there is no rotator cuff either superiorly or posteriorly so both supra and infra are involved and if you look at the axial section you see a tendon going anteriorly so the subscapularis is intact but there is no supraspinatus no infraspinatus so massive rotator cuff tear involving the supraspinatus and infraspinatus with grade 3 retraction okay so that is what we can see in the mri so irreparable rotator cuff tear Uh, irreparable because of the large retraction. Uh, I don't have a a, a sagittal uh, image, a T one sag image in which you have, could have seen the amount of fatty infiltration. So irreparable tear involving supraspinatus and infraspinatus. So what are the options we have? We can either do a partial repair. Partial repair means uh we we medialize we just take off some of the cartilage about 5 to 10 mm of the cartilage and whatever part of the rotator cuff can cup come up to the medialized gt you repaired that part so that's a partial repair with medialization you can try and do a uh, scr or superior capsular reconstruction either you can do a tendon transfer or you can do a reverse shoulder arthroplasty so what we have done what we will talking about is tendon transfer why not other options partial repair can be done scr for scr it said that there should be some amount of cuff postero superior cuff which you are able to repair if you are able to repair some part or infraspinatus your superior capsular reconstruction can substitute for your supra spinal or the superior part of the cuff tendon transfer either lat dorsi or uh or a lower trapezius can work in these situations the reverse shoulder a patient is about 
55 so a, a little bit young for that kind of surgery so tendon transfer for me is the ideal surgery for this kind of patient why lat dorsi why not uh, why not sorry why lower trapezius why not less lat dorsi because lower trapezius has a very similar line of pull as your infraspinatus it's a in phase transfer it's it, it's when you do a abduction external rotation your lower trapezius is also contracting uh, and so it becomes a in phase transfer and it's a much easier to rehab much faster to rehab as compared to a non phasic transfer like a lat dorsal and literature has also told us that though lat dorsi and lepidotor trapezius both work for to improve the patient uh, function of patients with posterior superior rotator cuff tears but lat uh, la lower trapezius is a better option because of faster rehab uh, lesser amount of rehab and it works better in young active patients also so what are the steps for doing a lower trapezius transfer so steps are first you do a diagnostic arthroscopy or you can do a open uh, do a open and try and see if there is a uh, any amount of cuff repair you can do so you do a diagnostic arthroscopy or diagnostic open uh, subacromial decompression and try and see if there is any amount of partial repair which can be done then you can harvest a tendon a uh, lower trapezius is a very small tendon and it would not be able to cover so lower trapezius arises from your uh, your lower uh, your thoracic lower thoracic vertebra and attaches on to the scapular medial uh, scapular spine and if you harvest it from there there is about 10 to 12 cm of gap between the gt and the uh, insertion of the trapezius so you need an another graft another tendon to uh, to uh, to bridge this gap between the lower trapezius and the greater tuberosity so you can use hamstring you can use the peroneus uh, longus so as i do this procedure in the lateral position a peroneus uh, longus graft is much easier to take in that position so third part third step is peroneus harvest and preparation of that tendon then i harvest the lower trapezius then i deliver the peroneus graft then make a tunnel from the scapular spine into the subacromial space and deliver the tendon to this tunnel then i do a repair of the peroneus tendon on to the gt a single row or double row repair and the last step is to repair this peroneus or the tendon harvested tendon graft with my uh, harvested lower trapezius tendon so i'll just repeat the steps do a diagnostic arthroscopy do a subacromial deep compression and try and achieve any amount of repair you can do of your uh, rotator cuff tear then you harvest the bridging tendon graft from either peroneus or hamstring then you harvest your lower trapezius then you make a tunnel from the scapular spine into the subacromial space and deliver the harvested tendon bridge bridge graft from the scapular spine tunnel into the subacromial space second last step is you repair that delivered tendon onto the gt and last you connect the graft with your lower trapezius that is the last step so this is uh, the first step uh, how do you play this and so we did the diagnostic arthroscopy we do a diagnostic arthroscopy and see and try and see whether there is a cuff tear so this is a big cuff tear you see and there was Uh, this is the big cuff tear. So this is your GT. This is your humeral head. Inside, what you see is almost the glenoid. 
So a massive cuff tear almost reaching up to the glenoid at the apex and with this edge like this. So this is a massive, massive cuff tear. And when we tried to bring this cuff edges onto the GT, they were not coming and it was tearing much more. So this is your part one, diagnostic arthroscopy, step one. And try and see if there's any repair you could do. That is part type uh, step two. And if you, uh, you always also you do your suboptimal decompression over here. Step three is your heparonious harvest. So this is incision behind your lateral malleolus.